Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to finish the N62 engine of the BMW 735i. The parts I ordered arrived, the pistons still need new rings and the cylinder heads have to be put back together. If you missed the previous episodes go to my channel, the links are also in the description. Please like and subscribe, thanks. If you watched the previous episodes you already saw the new oil pump. It's a second-hand one from Germany with three months warranty. It is practically impossible to find this pump in France for a good price. Since I also speak German it was no problem ordering it there. Now gearbox and engine are both out of the car I wanted to change the torque converter with a fresh one. This one has been rebuilt in the Netherlands and sent over. BMW diagnostic software detected it had too much slip every now and then. These are all OEM replacement parts. It includes piston rings, gaskets of every kind possible and the new piston rod bearings. I am not going to make a list with all that's in there but be sure it was not cheap. The grand total was about $3400, the torque converter and oil pump included. In a separate box are some gaskets, same story as the valve seals actually, because softeners in rubber are forbidden in Europe they just harden over time and crumble up. Now I have all the goodies I need, it is time to concentrate on the engine block itself. In the beginning of this project I took one piston out to check the rings and the rod bearings. There, that one. The crank does not look too bad, it is clear it suffered from oil starvation but the grooves in it are not deep, I can barely feel them with my nail. So, a good polish up will do, at least, that's what I hope for. Of course it all depends in which condition the rest of them will be. This little jet sprays oil against the bottom of the piston to keep it cool. Now, this engine has no separate oil cooler but the oil will always be cooler than the piston just after a combustion stroke. These engines run at a relatively high operating temperature. I will talk about that later on in this video. Took the other piston on the same journal out as well and gave the journal a first step polish. I do have to hit it again with a finer compound but this one turned out to be just fine. It is super smooth so I am confident in this process. I will show you how I did it later on. The first goodie is out of the box. A set of brand new piston rings. BMW does a great job in packaging, even when you're in doubt of what has to go where, there is absolutely no question about it this way. Although it is original BMW and they look wonderful. I still have to measure them up before installing. The gap has to be 0.6 mm or 0.024 inches. You call it 24 thousandths I think. If not educate me in the comments. The piston rings are spot on, but I do have to measure all of the cylinders. In this picture I am unblocking the hole which is there to get rid of the oil on the cylinder walls. When that hole is blocked there can be a pressure build up of oil in the first piston ring. Note the first one is the lowest on the piston. Opened up and cleaned out the hole. If you look closely you can see there is still debris in the grooves where the piston rings have to go. It has to be cleaned out so the rings can do their work and are not just pushed against the cylinder wall. The way I clean those grooves out is by taking an old ring and use it as a scraper. I take the upper ring because it normally has a square shape. Once everything is clean I can move on installing the rings onto the piston. When the grooves were cleaned out I put the first set of rings on. It is advised to have the gaps of the three rings 120 degrees from each other on the piston. I made an exception for the lowest ring, that's 30 degrees off from the top one. As you may remember the lower ring consists of a pack of three. I cleaned up the piston itself as much as I could without damaging it. Note the arrow on the top. It is pointing to the front of the engine and it has to be installed that way. That also makes it clear where it goes when you only take them out two by two. One on each side. Are you ready to open the second goodie bag? Brand new big end bearings for the rods. The top is still in great shape so I am not going to replace those. Nor am I going to replace the main bearings of the crankshaft, they have very big open holes for lubrication, I checked them and there is absolutely no problem with those. Noted on the bearings itself is blue, meaning it is standard size, red will be oversized and then you can go up one more. Installed the first piston I took out back into the cylinder. 
you can see it coming back down into the engine block to meet the crank. Let me put a marker on it. There it is. Put the cap on with new bolts. You have to use new ones because they are meant to stretch. Using the old ones you have the risk of bottoming out in the rod. You may break the old ones this way if you torque them to spec. Use new ones. Better safe than sorry. Also took the next pair of pistons out. Here is how I polish up the cranks. I use a cargo strap which is made out of nylon fiber. It will not damage the crank but it will take care of contamination and very light scratches. Passed it three times with different grades of rubbing compound which gives a very smooth surface. And then this is the result. Nice and shiny. If ever there will be scratches left after this process the crankshaft has to be brought to a machine shop specialized in grinding. I do have a lathe but crankshafts are very precise. I would never attempt anything like that myself. Just a reminder why I am replacing the rod bearings. There is virtually nothing on them anymore and this is not even the worst one. Looks like they have been very hot as well. Cleaned out the engine block as good as I could. Inspected all oil holes and channels and cleaned them out as well. To the viewers this picture is just one second further down the line. In reality it took quite some time to replace all piston rings and rod bearings. I am really happy it is done though. Now I'm working on the underside of the engine. The most logical thing to do next is install the oil pump. I replaced all rubber rings that take care of the sealing to the oil channels. Since I did not take this pump apart I don't need new gaskets for it. This is the new gasket for the upper part of the oil pan. You can see the profile that's in the gasket. Meaning, when you torque it to spec it will get squashed down to make a perfect seal. The blue areas are BMW's pre-applied liquid gasket points. That is where the gasket goes over a transition from the engine block itself to the front cover. This gasket is really a one-time use only. Just loading the old one up with liquid gasket you apply yourself is the El Cheapo solution and eventually leads to damage or leaks. This part is in place. Bolted down to factory settings all the way around. On the side there are 5 bolts you can see. The rest of the bolts live on the inside of this pen. Actually, most of them are there. To be exact there are 13 bolts on the outside and 15 on the inside. That makes it impossible to remove this part without removing the actual lower oil pan. This is the lower oil pan. All cleaned up and ready to go on. That sort of pipe you see sticking upwards is the thermal oil sensor. Although there is no way you can see the oil temperature in your instrument cluster, the data is saved by the motor management computer. That is why you need diagnostic software, if it goes wrong it will set a fault in the memory. This one goes on as well, goes without saying it has a brand new original BMW gasket. BMW does not make its own gaskets, most of the time they are from a German brand called L-Ring. If you want to save a few bucks you can buy the gaskets of that brand, while being sure it's the exact same quality. Now, when you are putting this pan back on you have to use new bolts. Where one gasket is good to use once only, others can be reused but then you need new bolts according to BMW. That blue stuff is a sort of Loctite, I'm sure just using Loctite will be alright as well. The underside is closed up now, so I can go on to a part of this rebuild that I love the most. Here we have two bags of goodies. Not really expensive but very necessary. They contain the new valve seals for both cylinder heads. Let's get started. The first cylinder head with the valves and lifters in place. It took a while but if I describe every step of the process you'll be asleep after a few minutes. Agreed. This robot voice is not doing it any good either. I'm working on it. I do hope you can cope with it for a bit more. My microphone is on a slow boat from China. Back to the engine. I prepared the surface of the engine to receive the new head gasket and the cylinder head. This head gasket is the heaviest I ever had in my hands. It consists of multiple layers and I'm sure that this is the reason head gaskets in whatever BMW just don't blow out. There is a lot more of that blue stuff on it. If there is anything BMW is actually doing right it will be their head gaskets. 
the first cylinder head is in place, not bolted down yet. I turn the engine so the head is horizontal. I absolutely do not want the head to fall off while I'm getting the head bolts ready to go in. Note both cams are still out, that's because the head bolts are located right under them. New head bolts in their respective places. You have to use new ones because, when you torque them down they stretch. First pass, from the middle in a criss-cross pattern like most heads. First pass is just 30 newton meters or about 22 foot pounds. Then 90 degrees twice. Install the valve tronic unit in the head. The inlet camshaft is integrated in this unit and you do not need new bolts. Be sure I took care the lobes were positioned in a way not a single valve was open. I will come to the timing a bit later on. There is a trick to do that. Exhaust cam installed. For the caps you do need new bolts because they are the stretchy kind as well. Also put the timing chain on and rotated the engine to see if the timing was still right. Just because I did not take the Vanos units off I was able to mark the cams and the chain and get them on the exact same position as they were before I took this engine apart. Be sure there is another engine rebuild coming in which I had to do the timing again. Another BMW V8. Put the valves and new valve seals in the second cylinder head and installed it just the way I did the first one. I can just enjoy how it is looking. Knowing the engine will be better than when it was new because I used upgraded BMW parts makes me very happy. Cost a bit but well worth it. Installed the valve tronic and the exhaust camshaft into the second cylinder head as well. Turned it twice 360 degrees and it is sure the timing is spot on. Now. When you have to install cylinder heads on any V8 engine first put it on TDC and then retard it 45 degrees. This way none of the pistons are at the top. BMW even has a mark on the front cover of the engine as being the safe point. Went on and installed the upper timing covers. New gaskets for sure, then the solenoids for the Vanos system. Two on each side, there are intake and exhaust Vanos on this engine. Note the valve covers have a different shape from one side to the other. I am ready to put the valve covers on. BMW tells me I have to put a little bit of liquid gasket at the points where there is a transition from one engine part to another. Just a little bit. Not half a gallon like the guy who worked on this engine before did. Both valve covers are in place. I did not yet put in the stepper motors for the valve tronic, if I would have done that it is impossible to get the intake manifold in place. Everything at the right time. You know my statement, do the job right or don't do it at all, do not even start if you don't want to have it perfect. At this point I put the gearbox on instead of the intake manifold, and I tell you why. There is wiring running under the intake manifold which has to go in first. The wiring loom starts at the end of the gearbox so that's the reason. I did put in the rebuilt torque converter and bolted it to the flywheel. The second reason I put on the gearbox is it contains the holes to bolt on the starter motor, they go through the bell housing. I don't say you have to bolt on the transmission first but when both engine and gearbox are out of the car it is easier to do it like this. Starter motor installed. Now I can get the wiring loom out and concentrate on installing it. I will not show every single connector when I am hooking them up. Installed the intake manifold and just before I did that I replaced the water pump with a brand new one. The old one was still good but they have the bad habit of blowing up. Especially when they did a hundred thousand miles already. The electrics are all connected to the engine and it is time to put it back in the car. I prepared the engine bay and put the hood up all the way. Not only Mercedes-Benz have that option, although BMW made it a little bit more complicated. Halfway in, slowly but steady it's going back to where it belongs. Before I drop it in completely there are some parts that have to be installed. One of them being the power steering pump, the hydraulic lines are virtually impossible to get to once the engine is in place. Then. When the engine is at the point the header on the passenger side would have passed the air conditioning compressor I can bolt on that header. On this side it is a lot easier access doing this now than when the engine is fully installed. 
there is more room on the other side so that can be done later. The engine is in. I bolted the airco compressor on and that was the last auxiliary unit to go on the engine. From now it is clean sailing home. Just hook everything back up and fill the coolant system. Put oil in the engine and power steering system and see if it will start up. I don't have any footage of the engine running but it fired up first time I put the fuse for the fuel pump back in its place. I cranked it a few times before, until the oil pressure light went off, just to prime the engine before the first start. Except for the headers and the power steering pump this lot has to go on to make it a complete car again. I do not have any more pictures but the engine was running perfect. As to this day there has been 80,000 mile put on it without a single problem, just regular maintenance. That concludes the series about the engine rebuilt. Next week I start a new series. Have not yet decided on the subject but be sure it's going to be interesting. Thanks for watching.